Coming up next, 11 things you might not know about the doors. I heard it on the X. Eleven things you might not know about the doors. Please hit like and subscribe. Number eleven. Soul Kitchen, behind the song. Early in the summer of 1965, Jim Morrison did some of his most important writing for the doors while living on a Venice rooftop and surviving primarily on a diet of acid and poetry. By the end of that summer, he had moved into a small beach apartment with Ray and Ray's girlfriend, Dorothy Fujikawa, and quickly discovered that he could get cheap, substantial meals at Olivia's, a tiny, somewhat seedy soul food restaurant near Maine and Ocean Park in Santa Monica. Olivia herself was happy enough to cook for the ragtag bunch that patronized her place, but she was strict about getting her customers out the door when it was closing time. Soul Kitchen was Jim's bluesy rejoinder, a plea to be allowed to stay in the warm, comfortable kitchen all night rather than face the cars stuffed with eyes and the formable neon groves of nighttime in Los Angeles. The song was another remarkable lyrical triumph for Morrison, as he again created mysteriously compelling words to describe a very small, human moment. Especially notable is the refrain, Learn to Forget. which could be Morrison's motto at the time, given his attempts to distance himself from his family and his past. Number 10. Not like, father like son. As a counterculture icon, Jim Morrison couldn't have been less like his father, George S. Morrison a high-ranking U.S. Navy officer who flew missions during World War II and the Korean War and retired a rear admiral. Then he called me on the phone and said that he was going on the road with a rock band. And I told him, that's ridiculous. <laughs> he told him, you, you're not a singer, you can't sing. And I told him, he was, he was really, I said, you are on the wrong track here. Get yourself a job. They say that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. But in this case, it did. Number 9. Jim Morrison's Last Show. From Los Angeles, California. On December 12, 1970. Please welcome The Doors. The Doors played what turned out to be the band's final concert with Morrison. The 20 Song Show took place in New Orleans at the concert hall, The Warehouse. Tickets were $5 for the show, with the rock band Kansas serving as the opening act. Members of Kansas later joined The Doors on stage during Light My Fire. On the last song, he took the mic stand and started smashing it and smashing it right into the stage floor. And then he walks off. But that show is passed into rock and roll legend, much like Morrison himself. On July 3rd, 1971, Jim Morrison was found dead in the bathtub of his apartment in Paris, France by his longtime companion, Pamela Corson. Carry on, my wayward Jim. Number 8. The Doors Behind the Name and Logo any respectable shortlist of rock and roll's most iconic band logos would have to include the Doors logo. According to most sources, the musician's logo was conceived by Bill Harvey from Elektra Records. Note the similarities between the lettering used for the Doors and Elektra Records E logo from the same time period, with geometric typography and wide elements that resonate with the image of Doors. The two O's are like the caps of screws typically used to fasten doors. Now the name. The Doors took its name from the title of Aldous Huxley's book, The Doors of Perception, which comes from a line in a poem by William Blake. There are things known and there are things unknown, and in between are the doors of perception. Famous poet William Shakespeare once said, What's in a name? Number 7. Jim Morrison is part of the 27 Club. Morrison died exactly two years after Rolling Stones guitarist Brian Jones was found dead in his swimming pool, and roughly nine months after Janis Joplin and Jimi Hendrix had succumbed to drugs, a common age for innovative musicians to expire. Other members of the 27 Club include Kurt Cobain and Amy Winehouse. That's 
One heck of a band. In heaven. Number six. Morrison's vocals were recorded from a bathroom. Riding down a trail to Albuquerque, saddlebags all filled. When recording L.A. Woman in 1970, hey, wait a minute. Are we serious now? the band we decided serious? to go back to the place where their creative process originated. The cars hiss by my window. Like the waves down on the beach. Hey, look, I'll come in whenever I feel like Densmore it. stated in a documentary, it was the room we had rehearsed in forever. Our music was soaked into the walls, he added. All right, this is called Riders on the Storm. Their longtime rehearsal place was a small room decorated with beer bottles, a mess of cables and instruments, a jukebox, and a pinball machine. According to Bruce Botnick, their sound engineer and producer, it was super tight and they all packed in like sardines. Because the bathroom in their space was acoustically ideal, Morrison would often record the vocals in the space using his Electro Voice 676G stage mic. Right, riders on the storm, take 10. Mark that. He even removed the bathroom door to ensure smooth communication between his bandmates. Whatever works, right? Please hit like and subscribe. Number five. Jim transcended the role of the rock star bad boy. Given Morrison's penchant for nefarious and erratic behavior, Morrison had many brushes with the law during his short 27 years on Earth. Jim Morrison's first arrest came in 1963, on September 28th, when he was arrested for disturbing the peace. During Morrison's academic stint at Florida State University, he was taken into custody for public drunkenness during a college football game. Morrison had been engaged with TCU fans. and leaving the stadium, he stole a police officer's helmet from a squad car after the authorities had been called. From disturbing the peace to peace frog. Number four. Behind the cover, Morrison Hotel. Morrison Hotel is arguably one of their best records and perhaps their most recognizable album cover. The iconic front cover of Morrison Hotel, The Doors' fifth album, which was released in February 1970. The photograph was taken at the actual Morrison Hotel located at 1246 South Hope Street in Los Angeles. The cover photo was taken by Henry Diltz at the Morrison Hotel in downtown Los Angeles. The band were not given permission to photograph, so they did it while the clerk was called away from the desk. As Henry describes the event. But as I looked through, I could see the guy leave the desk, right. get in the elevator, and split. So I said, <laughs> quick, quick, run in there. The band jumped right behind the windows and hit their places without shuffling as Diltz took the shot. One roll of film and they were out of there. That's what I call a Kodak moment. Number three. The Buick Light My Fire commercial. In October 1968, the doors are approached by Buick to use Light My Fire in a television commercial to promote sales of the new 1970 Buick Opel GT and GS 455. John Densmore recalls, it all started in 1968 when Buick offered us $75,000 to use Light My Fire to hawk its new hot little offering, the Opel. Ray, Robbie, and I okayed it while Jim was out of town. He came back and went nuts. As the band had agreed in 1965 to both equal splits and everyone having veto power in decisions, Morrison consequently called Buick and threatened to smash the Buick automobile with a sledgehammer on television should the presumably ready commercial be aired. Now that's one way to get out of a car deal. Number two. The Doors had a unique band setup. The Doors didn't have a bass player. Instead, Ray Manzarek played the bass parts on a piano bass during live shows, making their sound unique. As for the music itself, keyboardist Ray Manzarek is popularly thought of as being the main contributor to The Doors' sonic voice, second only to Jim Morrison. Ray Manzarek was one of the first rock musicians to use a multi-keyboard setup. The distinctive tone became a signature sound of The Doors. Manzarek's keyboards of choice were a Vox Continental for rhythm, played with his right hand, 
and a Fender Rhodes bass as a stand-in for a bass player, controlled by his left. The bass player's function along with the drums is to be the engine that drives the car. In Ray's case, he had the keys. Number 1. Jim Morrison wasn't a naturally charismatic performer. The London Fog welcomes from Venice Beach the Doors. In January 1966, the fledgling Doors landed a residency at the Los Angeles club The London Fog. They played five 45-minute sets per night, six nights a week. All that practice proved vital for Morrison, who wasn't a natural performer. In fact, he'd often face the band instead of the crowd. But in the beginning, he was, well, he, he would face us at the London Fog down the road. He couldn't even look out at the audience. So I think, you know, he always had that in him. He, he was just waiting to, to let it out. From his back to the audience, to back door man. I heard it on the X. Ladies and gentlemen, the Beatles. All right, uh, Elvis has left the building. Thanks for watching. Tell them you heard it on the X.